Hello and welcome to this video that addresses the silence that appears when someone asks you to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. The question raised in arguments with either existentialists or objectivists is that everything you see, hear or think is informed by your cultural or environmental foundation. Commonly, it is couched as a case of claiming that your definition or meaning of a particular topic is subject to your or others' arbitrary meaning. This is similar to arguments by religious zealots of the early 20th century. At the time, they were arguing that nobody could know something as fundamental as the value of 1 plus 1 equals 2 without accepting that a divine being afforded humanity faith in understanding its value. This video will try to summarize what happened, who was involved, and what was done to prove that it is indeed true. This was around the same time as one of the greatest minds of the 20th century was engrossed with mathematics and logic. Without foreknowledge of this topic, you might first think of Lewis Carroll, but no, it is Lord Bertrand Russell. He put forward a proof that 1 plus 1 equals 2, called Principia Mathematica, with the help of Alfred North Whitehead, that will be summarily described and explained in this video. To distill Principia Mathematica to its core, there is a logical reasoned proof to a mathematical equation, which is very much like modern physics theoretical or thought experiments. It is also what happens when intellectual powerhouses are left to invent their own entertainment. Russell began working on Principia Mathematica as an extension of his earlier work, arguing that mathematics and logic are the same. This identified a problem known as Russell's paradox, that is described as a set containing parts that are not part of the set. For the purposes of this video, we will be limited to working in and with the first 60 arguments of Principia Mathematics, and largely skip much of the prefatory pages. More so because very few people have the time or inclination to watch a video on more than 360 pages of proof that 1 plus 1 equals 2. This was part of a three-volume behemoth of logic that was published in 1910. The first volume was co-written with Whitehead, and the latter two were almost all Russell's work, drawing on parts of his collaboration. It was an attempt to derive all of mathematics from purely logical axioms. This used a system of types, so that objects of a given type are built exclusively from objects of a preceding type, lower in the order. This prevents loops like those observed in Russell's paradox. This work also required three further axioms, these being infinity, that there is an infinite value or set which contains every possible value, choice, that if you were to divide every set into its parts, that there would be at least one value in any set. This effectively removed the option of a zero value. Finally, there is reproducibility, that any true function can be expressed with a predictive function, such as an equation. These three extra assumptions are distinct from those in physical sciences, which assume that you exist, there is a physical universe, that you have an effect on the universe, and that you can quantify or qualify this effect. Let's begin by assuming a collection of things. The what and how many is irrelevant, so long as they are distinct and separate. You now create a way to label these in an ordered system, so that one leads to another like dominoes in a line, each entity in this chain of items being a set, as is a collection of items in each. At some point during your ordering process, you will need a starting point. This starting point is your labeling system's equivalent of the number one. The distinct and separate items that come after it, this thing called one, is two, 
and so on. This means that item number 3, or set 3, contains 3, 2 and 1. Set 2 contains both 2 and 1, and so on going up the hierarchy. This is an oversimplified example of how Russell structured his type system, and how the three axioms work. Before going any further, it is worth noting that this work was published over 100 years ago. The way it was written is very different to modern mathematical notation. The language used is like modern language, which evolved and changed over the course of time. As an example, where parentheses are used today, a period was used in this proof. There are other symbolic and syntax anomalies, if you will, that crop up from time to time. This includes the following symbols that need to be clarified if you are not familiar with them. If you are, then there is a timestamp below that you can jump ahead to. This symbol means that the formula to which it applies is asserted to be true. This one is logical implication, and this is logical equivalence. This is the empty set, or a null set. And these are the set intersection and union operators. Finally, these mean that X is an element set of Y, or a similar sort of definition, whether that is A is a subset of B, and so on. Now to get into the meat of this video. These two images are from the Universe of Discourse, November 2017 and depict both the original and modern interpretation of the core argument in Principia Mathematica. You will find a link to this in the description below. The image here is the proof of the equation. The original looks cleaner and is easier to follow, and so will be used from here on. Principia Mathematica begins by establishing the background and necessary logical grounding for its initial work. This describes the symbols, but also how they can demonstrate that any system is made up of two elements, that is, two sets that contain a given value. The exact value is irrelevant, but that this value, or x, is there. This is extended in argument 54.3 to demonstrate that both x and ix are identical, with all of the common elements removed which leaves only alpha as a single set. This is built on to show that if they are single sets, then the difference of them is zero, which in turn means that the union of the two intersects is still two. This is then demonstrated using the theorems from 54.26, 51.231, 13.1, 13.2, and 52.1. This can be summarized as the sets of A and B are equal to X and Y. The intersection of AB is zero if they are the same set, which means AB equals XY, and the intersect of XY is two if they are different sets. They then assert that this supports the proposition that approximates that although the same, both one and one are different which creates three sets for the number two. This is perhaps more easily understood by the infamous example of dividing by zero. In the first instance, AB does a kind of twisted sort of division by zero, whilst in the second instance, the argument uses a sort of common denominator. This is similar to modern matrices in data analysis. This can be further summarized as taking an example case and demonstrating through logic that a set of some value is the sum of its parts, such as 1 equaling 1. You prove that this works, and then you can assume it will be extrapolated to work with your next integer, which could be 2, and so it becomes 1 plus 1 equals 2. By doing this, you can use inductive logic to prove that if 1 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 2, then any formula that it follows is equally valid. In this case, the 1 equals 1 and the 2 includes 1 as part of its set. This is perhaps most easily understood with a picture. 
Fortunately, Russell was using real numbers for this. He never entered the realm of imaginary numbers or other higher orders of mathematical operations. It clearly established that the claim 1 plus 1 equals 2 had a logical and applied proof. This established via logic that mathematics stood on its merit without paradoxically relying on its own methodology as vindication. This addressed a perceived and perhaps real but inconsequential gap in the foundations of mathematics. In addressing it, Russell managed to spark a greater interest in symbolic logic and arguably facilitated, if not instigated, advances in metalogic. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.